You're listening to the Secure Dad Podcast. Discover ways to secure your home, protect your family, and embrace your role as a protector parent. Welcome, friend. I'm Andy Murphy, the creator of the Secure Dad. This podcast serves to help families become proactive in their safety. The information I share on this podcast is for general information purposes only. My goal is to empower you to make safer decisions for yourself and your family. Today, we're stepping into the spooky season and talking about Halloween safety. We're skipping the murderous clowns and we'll focus on the real dangers that we face this October 31st. All of that and more ahead on the Secure Dad Podcast. It's time to take responsibility for your home security, and I'm here to help you. Learn how to protect your family at home with my Amazon best-selling book, Home Security, The Secure Dad's Guide. In this book, I'll share with you quick tips that you can use to make your home instantly safer, and I'll teach you my layered home defense strategy of discipline, deter, fortify, and defend. Get your copy today at Amazon when you search for The Secure Dad. And for fun, a few years ago, I wrote a masterpiece of an article on supernatural situational awareness entitled Staying Left of Boo. It's about all of the terrible mistakes that characters make in horror movies, and you can check it out for fun in the link in the show notes. Well, the haunting season is upon us. And before we head out the door to pillage candy from our neighbors, let's take into consideration some basic safety precautions to have a truly happy Halloween. The biggest threat to kids each Halloween is being hit by a passing car. It's not stranger danger or razor blades and candy. It's your neighbor in a Corolla. It's dark. The kids are hopped up on sugar and excited. And they're just, that just makes for a bad combination. So if you're driving during trick-or-treating, make sure you have your headlights on. Slow down and don't assume the kids are going to be making safe decisions. Don't assume that they're going to get out of the way or that an adult is going to pull them out of the way. You just have to take responsibility for every single part of that interaction. To help our kids be seen, we need to add glow sticks to their costumes and even give them a flashlight. There are tons of great glow stick options out there, and most of them can actually be found at the dollar store, which is really the dollar twenty-five store now, in case you didn't know. The wristbands are good. There's those little things that they'll crack, and they give you a little piece that you can kind of put it around your, your arm. And there's even necklaces. The bigger ones can actually be worn as a necklace. And those can actually just be cracked and pretty much worn for a few hours, so that should last the entire night for your trick-or-treater. And I think many small kids will like the glow sticks because they look cool. And so give them a color that's going to kind of match their costume and whatever it is. And when you go to buy the glow sticks, I want you to get two boxes because those are great as emergency lighting for power outages. As a parent, I suggest at least one adult go with each trick-or-treating group to help make sure the kids are safe and they know how to get home. If you are so inclined, wear a glow stick yourself and carry a flashlight. And the flashlight on your phone does not count. Use an actual flashlight. This way, you can have your phone ready to take pictures when your kids are going trick-or-treating and having fun. When you're out there with your little miniature horde, make sure that they know that you are in charge. Don't let kids run ahead of you because there's always that one kid who has ADHD and he's all over the place and he's hopped up on sugar. And then there's the other kid who's really clumsy and falls over and you got to help pick him up. And the next thing you know, your entire group is spread down the street. So move as a group and make sure that everyone is with you before you head to the next house. And also when you're going to houses, you know, make sure you coach your kids that they're not supposed to go inside the homes or garages. I know some people have like little miniature haunted houses and I suggest you stay out of them unless you really know the people who do this. If this is like a community tradition that's been going on for like 25 years or so, that's, you know, probably okay. But if it's if it's the, you know, the neighbors that, you know, you don't really know all that well, I would just stay out of the house. And speaking of your neighbors, it is your duty as a parent to know the homes that you are going to. You never want to end up accidentally at the home of a convicted child molester. To help you avoid those homes, you can download the National Sex Offender Public Website app. The NSOPW app will give you a list of names and addresses of registered sex offenders within three miles of your current location so that you can avoid these homes. Now, most offenders know 
that they can't participate in trick-or-treating. And in many jurisdictions, the police will make contact with offenders and remind them of that. But still, it's best to know this information, even if it's not Halloween. If you grew up in the 80s like me, you were scared by the seemingly real-life terrors of strangers putting drugs and razors in your trick-or-treat candy. Most of that turned out to be hype over a few small incidents around the country. However, while we've, you know, kind of make a joke about this over the past few years, many police departments are warning parents about something called rainbow fentanyl. From what I've seen, these are circular, multicolored pills that really do look like sweet tarts. And I do see where these could be mistaken for candy. Now, some experts say that these drugs are not being targeted uh, at kids for trick-or-treating and Halloween. However, DEA Administrator Ann Milgram has been quoted as saying, Rainbow fentanyl, fentanyl pills, and powder that come in a variety of bright colors, shapes, and sizes is a deliberate effort by drug traffickers to drive addiction among kids and young adults. Now, I do think that this is something that you do need to be aware of for Halloween. And I think the bigger concern is if a kid mistakenly gets some of these from home and shares it with their friends at school. So coach your kids, regardless of how this happens, coach your kids that they are to only eat candy that has commercial packaging. Anything loose in a bag is not to be consumed. If they can't see like the little S for Skittles or the M for M&Ms, they shouldn't have that either. I don't think it hurts to check your kid's candy, just don't make a big deal out of it. And remember, for all the dads out there, the Halloween tax is 15% of the candy. Don't short yourself, kings. I hope you have a safe and memorable trick-or-treat experience and a happy Halloween. Well, that's all that I have for the Secure Dad podcast for today. Thank you, friend, for listening. If you're ready to take your home security seriously, I am here to help. Head over to Amazon and check out my best-selling book, Home Security, The Secure Dad's Guide. I'm Andy Murphy, and until next time, take care and be spooky.